to the second part of the smart robot car and today we're actually going to be start building it so this is the second part in a three-part series so let's dive in so here are the directions i'll be displaying each of the pages as i talk and construct the robot so um let's actually start building the robot now all right, so you can see I'm making my first motor. We're going to do this a total of four times. Um, I'm putting the aluminum block on, followed by screwing the nut. And also notice that the aluminum block is on the same side where the wire comes out. So um, I, I created one, so now let's create the other four. Oh, well, here's a cool little snap transition, and we have all four of our motors now. So now let's go to the next step. So I'm screwing in the last two screws um, at the bottom connected to the aluminum plate. So we have four more motors, so let's do that four more times. All right, screwed in the other motors. Just a side note, make sure that the lighter part or the head of the motor is pointing toward their specific end. So these are just the materials we're going to be needing for the next part of it. The line tracking module. Oh, that was a satisfying rip. Um, but the line tracking module we're going to um, attach to the bottom of the smart car. So I'm attaching the line module now. Um, you see those separation pillars, which are the rubber things. And then now I'm screwing in the nut, um, putting it, um, keeping it attached. And this is important to separate it and to attach it to the bottom of the base plate so that it can scan the ground and give us output accordingly. So now that we're done with the motors and the line tracking module, let's move to the expansion board and GY521. All right, so now we have the GY521 and the expansion board. And essentially what the GY521 is going to do is it's what is called a breakout board or a printed circuit board. And it's going to be used to process complex algorithms directly on the board. So. Here, I'm attaching the actual Arduino Uno to the board. Since we have the Arduino, we're going to um, connect them and attach it to the board. You see the separation pillars, the screws, the nuts. But take your expansion board and your GY521. Uh, make sure at, that it's oriented correctly the way that is shown on screen. And also, if you notice that the pins are all connected to the Arduino so that it can use plugs instead of the pins that we've been using for our projects. We're finished with the motors. So now we're going to the expansion board and you see the battery, the Lego battery that we have, and this is going to be our source of power. So now let's attach it. Now that we've attached the battery, you see those two screws on the side that I attached the battery to the platform. Um, just take a quick look at everything. We have those boards. You see how all those pins match up perfectly just so that um, it can access the ground or those pins. What we're going to talk about more in the next video with the um, coding. But you can also see there's a switch, so that's pretty cool too. So after we're finished with the boards, um, move on to the camera module. And like the name suggests, um, it's going to be used for seeing and recording, which can be important for like processing. So screw both parts in. Screwing in the second attachment of the camera module. And the thing about the camera module is that it's going to be placed right above the ultrasonic sensor so it can see further. And I think you can also use the app to see through the camera module. So we're using these wires, we're going to connect it, and then these will eventually connect to the expansion board. Let's move away from the camera module and move to the servo motor. Make sure that the orientation is correct. I know this is a little bit tricky, but you just feed the wire through the hole and make sure that the wire is on the back and that on the left side or my left that there's going to be the holes. And that's going to be very important when you're trying to attach it. So um, we're going to try to speed to this part, but essentially what you're going to do is you're going to attach these and use the nut. This, this part is a little bit tricky, so make sure you're using the correct screw and the correct um, nut. It's not the dark one. Back to the servo motor, notice the um, orientation of it, how the wiring is at the back and those grooves are at the front with the holes on the left. 
Now we're attaching the ultrasonic sensor, which we worked with. And the way it works is that it uses the ultrasonic sound waves to detect the proximity. And once it gets those uh, waves back, um, it detects how close or far it is based on the reflection and its frequency. The ultrasonic sensor we have again, and then we're going to connect it with the camera module and both of them are going to connect and be used for input to detect certain things that we can use with the app and the code. So his ultrasonic sensor sits right below the camera module and screw that in. Once again, we're dealing with the servo, the ultrasonic sensor, and the camera module. And just like you did with the servo, just feed the line through the middle square. And essentially what we're going to use is in the project is we're using the servo's range of motion in order to turn the camera and turn the ultrasonic sensor so we can get different types of input. So I think with the app, what you can do is you can set it and um, move the servo and then you can see the different areas with the ultrasonic sensor or the camera module um, through the app and through some code. So let's just screw that down and um, make sure it's really tight because that's really important. Let's move on to the fun part now. We're gonna put all the connections together. You see that wire that I'm gonna connect to the ultrasonic sensor, and then we're going to match them up and align them. Um, what's also important to notice, like I was saying before, is instead of using pins and wires like we've been using, this way is much more effective. Um, you, these click in so it's more stable and you're able to actually um, use it with the Arduino. Now we're gonna screw in the part for our acrylic base plate. This is important. Um, this is for basically the support and structure um, to hold everything in the middle like one big sandwich. Um, this is important to screw in everything tight so everything is supported properly. Let's take our second plate and put it right on top of the first um, so that it's aligned with the support beams and also do not forget you have you should feed all of the wires through before you even attempt to screw the second plate down because I made the mistake of um, screwing it down then trying to feed the wires through and then having to eventually take off the second part and then feed the wires through like I'm doing in this clip so this is important because they're going to connect to the expansion board make sure it's aligned properly now, um, when you're putting the second one, the second layer on, please make sure that it's aligned properly. If you do it on the wrong side and wrong direction, it will not align, which can be a problem if you like try to force it. So just try both sides. So now um, I'm screwing in the top layer of the second um, part and please um, tighten it properly so that it's properly structured and everything is set down so that the robot can work. Okay, so now we are almost there. We just got to do a few connections and a few more things. Um, so make sure that wire was fed through the hole, the rectangular hole, um, from the motors and attach it to this area with four openings. Um, make sure that the wires are oriented properly um, so you don't force them. But essentially it allows the Arduino to access it and control it using the code. Now these are one of the final steps. So we're going to add this wire so it can communicate with the expansion board and the Arduino. Okay, so we connected that, um, took me a little bit, but um, feeding it through both holes so that it can get all the way up to the Arduino. Um, probably should have done this sooner, but um, we're going to connect it to that third slot there and it can finally use the line tracking module to track where it's going using the app and code. Last part is the wheels and make sure that they're oriented correctly and that you use the screw. So now the motors are just going to use the Arduino and use those directions just to spin, spin the motor, which will spin the wheel and allow it to go forward. So once you screw the wheel in, well, you're done with the project. So we'll go over the code in the next video in part three. So finally, we're done with the Lego Smart Car. Great job on completing it. You should feel really proud of yourself. 
but we still have to go over the code. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next part of our video, part three. We're gonna go over the code, the basic functionalities. So stay tuned for that and don't forget to subscribe. If you really did enjoy this video, please leave a like and leave a comment letting me know about your progress and how you felt about building the Arduino smart car. So that's gonna be it. And